Rabia and uh, Mary, you know, what were the things you learned off season one that you were like, we, this is what we want to lean in more on going into season two? I think with season one, you know, you, just to give Robbie a little credit, she had so much in her head about what this show was tonally and also visually. And season one, you're trying to really just make that happen. And all the pieces kind of casting this amazing group of people and Jennifer was not here too, but you know, finding all these people who actually bring that to life was amazing to see. Um, and then season, you know, we were able to get a lot of feedback and hear what people thought about the show and the positive responses were incredible. And then season two, we spent every day, we would take breaks on set during post, walk around and say, what can we be doing to improve? And what can we be doing better? You know, is bringing in more voices from the community of, you know, the autism community and bringing in more female directors and people <clears throat> of diversity. And it was really important to us to keep doing that. And, uh, you know, we tried to do that season one to season two and hopefully even more so if we get another season. I'm, I want to talk about the tone of the show a little bit because you brought it up. Yeah. You know, you guys seem to have this great way to balance some really serious stuff with, and then someone slices open the stuffed penguin's throat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, balancing that tone, what's that like in the writer's room particularly? Um, that was tricky season one, just communicating that tone to everyone, because it was, it was really in my head, and that is sort of how I write. I, uh, I love comedy, but I also really love like a human story that feels real, and I love moments of heart and drama. So um, just sort of, Communicating that was probably the biggest challenge of season one. Um, everyone picked it up pretty quickly, and then in season two, it hasn't been an issue at all. It's it's that tone has been set. Everyone involved gets it, um, and it never feels like something we have to force. I I've never looked at a script and said, "Oh, we need a joke here." It 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 just if the joke comes naturally it comes but luckily we're not on a, the type of show where we have to have four jokes a page or you know a heart moment at the end of every episode or whatever we sort of let the story and the characters be who they are. Do you find it difficult going to season two? You have to start portraying that Sam is growing as a person and that he is starting to grasp his world more and more as he gets older. You know, so what is it the challenge of taking him? You know a little bit further uh, into season two, but not so much that you suddenly portray, uh, rather betray, the fact that he is still a little emotionally stunted. What a smart question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think- Forbes, man. Yeah, smart question. <laughs> <laughs> He's, got a, He's got a brain. Uh, I, you know, for, for me, I've, I've never done this big of a part on a TV show, and that was a challenge in itself in the first season, and then to start a second season was a whole new thing that I've never experience or had to deal with. Um, and so I really wanted to make sure uh, anyone who was around me at the time knows like my biggest worry was, can I keep it consistent? And also take in all the lessons and things that Sam has learned in the first season and keep that with Sam as well um, without, like you said, betraying the character and all of a sudden Sam's just coasting through life. Um, he but, looks really cool, but he is a little bit nerdy in terms of how hard he works. Yeah, I am. I am. I am a one-track mind kind of. Person. Yeah. So it's it's whatever I focus on, I, I give it everything, and um, you know, it wasn't totally on me because I didn't write it. But uh, I will say that it was the biggest concern for me was, you know, I, I have to make sure that Sam comes across as real in the second season, and um, I'm not even sure if I 100% know how I did it. I guess because. I just did it and it seemed to work and um, it was my first shot at it. So um, yeah, hopefully it rings true. And Can I add something to that? We actually, I think in order to sort of not feel like <coughs> the seasons are the same, we changed Sam's goal a little bit. So in the first season, Sam was just entirely looking for love and in season two, he's still looking for love but he's also now facing the prospect of graduation, so he's looking for independence as well. So that sort of changed a little bit the things that he was play, having to play. That's something we talked about a lot, yeah, was the idea that season one is love and acceptance, and this is independence. Mm. Um, Bridget, something that I really admire about Casey, um, it was it's in season one, but I feel like it's even more exploited in season two, that she doesn't treat Sam like he's fragile. Mm -hmm. and that she, like we see, it's in the trailer, um, this moment of her sitting on him like an egg, where it feels like that's the kind of thing where you 
you think about who Sam is, maybe that's something that shouldn't be happening. So <clears throat> how much of that do you like about, do you like, do you ever feel like it's getting, it, Casey can get too mean with him or you think it's like, it just walks that line of like, she's, she's his sister. I mean, I think it's a fine line. I think Casey, like, it's the last thing on her mind, like what Sam thinks about her physical abuse at times. <laughs> we started off the show, like one of our first scenes was like me literally coming up and like hitting Kira in the arm three times and then like slapping him across the head. Um, so we established that like, I was like, oh, I like mess with this kid. Um, and I think like for Casey, she just goes about her life doing whatever she wants. Um, and although she cares so deeply about Sam, and especially in this season, like there are moments when she will drop everything just to do something to make him feel okay. Um, she also, like she says in this season, it's important to continue to bust balls in a times of crisis. <laughs> um, and she does. And I think in a way, Sam, whether he knows it or not, appreciates that about their relationship, that like she's the one person that like, treats him like he's anybody else. Um, and I don't know, I think, I think it comes from a place of love at the end of the day. Uh, Amy, um, knowing that going into this season, Julia was gonna have a much more emotionally um, uh, pressing mm -hmm. arc with her pregnancy, you know, what were you, what were you most uh, looking forward to uh, with her character this year? Yeah, I think it's the most interesting when you see someone trying to claw their way back up after hitting rock bottom. And I feel like a lot of the characters last season kind of <laughs> hit rock bottom. And so Julia, yeah, I feel like with, she feels like she failed at her job. And I don't care what anyone says, if your boyfriend proposes to you saying you win, <laughs> it's like worse than dying alone. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel uh, like I was <laughs> just looking forward to see how she has to make these huge life decisions of what she's gonna do with the baby, what she's gonna say to the um, boyfriend. Um, when she's like not in the best emotional state. <laughs> so it was, it was cool to see. Speaking of that moment with the cop that we saw in the trailer, and I want to address this to Mary, Rabia, uh, and, uh, and Kier, um, you guys dive much heavier into <clears throat> autism as a whole this season. I felt like last season was, hmm. it was a, a f rather what would have, could have been a very standard family dramedy with this whole other layer tacked onto it that really gave it this cool edge. But going into this season, it felt like you took advantage of the fact that people, you've started a conversation, people are listening to the conversation. So what was, you know, like for example, this season, we, there was a feature that went online. Uh, you have an entire peer group that Sam attends with all actors who are on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. you know, so what were you looking to get out of in terms of pushing the conversation about autism in this season? Do you guys wanna? Thanks. Uh, you're totally right. You kind of answered your own question. In that we, <laughs> I'm, I'm so good at asking that. <laughs> I know. He's just going to do this panel by himself. Uh, I kind of wrote this uh, a little bit just because it was in my head and it was for myself and I never imagined that it would be a show on Netflix when I wrote it. And, um, and then it became one and still... I don't think until it, the first season aired, it actually occurred to me that people were gonna watch it. And then millions of people did all around the world and they were telling us personal stories and it really hit me how um, much this show could mean to the community and how much it could help in giving a voice to people that don't have a voice in media a lot. Um, so uh, we did, I, you know, I saw an article about the police and people with autism and, and people, the police often misunderstanding people with autism or um, harassing or, and, uh, and that really st struck me. And that same day that I read that article, Nick Dodani, who plays Zahid, sent me the same article and said, did you read this? And it felt <laughs> like a sign. So I, uh, I went to the writer's room and I said, I think we need to do a story about this. And it was tricky because we didn't want to be preachy or heavy handed and we wanted a balanced approach. So it was the hardest storyline we did, but um, yeah. <laughs> 